Okay, so welcome back uh, from spring break. I hope you guys had a wonderfully relaxing, great spring break. Um, we don't have a lot of time left in the semester. So there's actually six full weeks left in this class. Uh, and then finals start. Finals are, for this class, will be Monday the 18th of May. Um, that means there's 12 class periods, and I have to cram a whole lot of information into your heads in those 12 class periods. <laughs> so we're going to do our best. Um, but you know, the pace picks up, and there's obviously lots of stuff left. And somehow, it always seems like there's never enough time to show you everything that I want to show you. Um, so today, uh, use, it, use today wisely. It's not a jam-packed day. Um, we're going to go through unrolling surfaces, which isn't that challenging. It'll also give you time, however, to deal with making sure your HDRIs are good, your renderings are good. Um, I did restart all the computers in the lab this morning, um, but I already had one class in here, and so a bunch of people might have closed the network renderings. Um, we will go around and try to make sure that they're all running. I'll show you how to get them running if they're not. Um, and then I can run around to the other labs and see if we can get a few more going for you guys. Um, but get those renderings done so you, you have kind of assignment 203 wrapped up. We just postponed the due date until Monday, which is fine with me. But try to get the stuff done, because we've got too much other stuff to be doing. Um, remember, before break, I also said that you want to have your um, retreat well modeled, because we're going to start dealing with that. Um, the reason that I'm pushing for you to have more and more stuff done is because I want to spend enough time doing lighting and artificial night scenes and all that kind of stuff, because a lot of people really like that. Um, and so I want to make sure you have enough time to, to experiment and, and learn that part of it as well. Uh, so we want to spend less time where we are and more time where we're going uh, as we go forward. So um, I will go over and grab out of my office. I have a couple physical examples of what we're doing today so you can see how this unrolling surfaces work. Um, what's really important for you to understand about unrolling surfaces um, is not one, not every surface is unrollable or what's called developable. Um, in Rhino, but if you're careful in your modeling and you create these developable surfaces, you can always use the unroll command and then laser cut the results, glue it together, and it'll make the same twist or bend that is modeled in Rhino in the physical model. Um, so it's a really good way of being able to create actual um, physical models out of Rhino. Um, in reality, when you look at buildings with curvature, you look at Frank Gehry buildings, for example, right? Look at the Disney Concert Hall or the Guggenheim. The surfaces, while they look really complex, are all developable surfaces. They're what are called ruled surfaces. And the fundamental part of that is that you can have a line of structure on one side and a line of structure on the other side, and the surface can undulate and twist, but it's always a straight line between the two lines of structure. And that's part of when you're actually building this building, you would choose to make it that way. Whenever you start to have two-dimensional curvature, so like a globe or a circle or anything like that, the structure of it physically is much harder to do, and it's much harder to make the material that molds to that shape. Right? If we think about flat material, it's really easy to do this kind of a twist to this material. But if I tried to bulge it out in the middle, it doesn't really work. Right? So if you think of a piece of paper, a lot of times that's an easy way of thinking about what's developable developable and what is not. Um, so I pulled up this building from last class, which has a little twist, and it has a few little uh, cuts out of each side. Uh, and I'm going to use that as my example for how unrolling surfaces work. I'm going to start without all of the floors, and I'm going to work with just the outer poly surface. So let me go to my layers, and I'm going to turn off the inner surface, the floors, and the ceilings. So I have just that nice poly surface. If your model is done where you have um, multiple pieces together, you want to try to join them together to the best of your ability. right? Because if you don't join them together, when we do the unroll, they're going to give you a bunch of individual little pieces. The other thing that's going to happen is a lot of you will have surface that aren't developable or you can't unroll. If that's the case, go through and just simplify, create a simple version of your building, and unroll that. And that'll work for your assignment 203, and it'll work for what you're doing uh, for today as well. I don't want to restrict you in that it has to be like this. I just want you to learn the unroll process. Okay? So unroll surface is actually really easy once you get it kind of in this stage uh, as a nice join together. Do include the top and the bottom of it, because you'll use that uh, to your advantage as well. Uh, so I'll initiate the unroll surface by typing unroll SRF. 
for unroll surface. It is also available under something. <laughs> I just never do it from here. So we'd have to look around for it. I have no idea where it is. Unroll developable surface under the surface menu, right? OK, so when I have unroll surface going, it's going to say select cur uh, here, let, let me have nothing selected. Unroll surface. Select surface or poly surface to unroll. Notice it can be a single surface or it can be a poly surface. So in this case, I wanted the poly surface. So I'll select my poly surface. Okay. Then it's going to say select curves on poly surface to unroll. This is if we want to unroll uh, curves with it. And I'll show you how to do this and, and the advantage of doing that in a little bit. Okay, then we also have the option for explode, yes or no, labels, yes or no, or keep properties, yes or no. Okay, I want to turn the labels on, so the labels are going to be on yes, and this is for your own sanity. Uh, in, the old, in the old Rhino, you didn't used to have labels, and it was a pain in the butt to figure out which pieces matched up with what. This makes it a lot easier, right? And I'm going to leave explode on yes for right now. Explode can sometimes be a good thing and can sometimes be a bad thing. Um, if we don't explode it, it will keep pieces that ha share sides together, but sometimes those pieces will overlap, in which case if you laser cut them, it wouldn't actually glue together. So we're going to keep explode on yes for right now. Okay. So once I have all of those options set, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer so that I can put this on the new layer when it creates it. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter, and it will then unroll and cut out all of the pieces for me. Right? And so we see that the 3D view here has labels on it, and the stuff on the ground that's flat has labels on it. Okay? So I'll switch into the top view so I can look down on it. And I'm then going to take all of these objects, and let's move them away here. Oops, I have to move these too. All right. So if I start to look at this, right, we have the top and the bottom. This would be the top. This would be the bottom. Now what I want to do is I want to start assembling this. Okay, so I see there's 13 and there's 13. So let me go ahead and move this object to there. And then let me rotate it from here down to there. Right, so we see that that goes together. Right, 7 here matches up there. And we can rotate that to match up. Right? Now, we can choose how we want this whole piece to come together. Right? There's obviously, it's just kind of like cutting out a box. Um, we, can, we can line up sides in a variety of different ways. So here, I can take the bottom with P6. And we can rotate P6 here to be there. I can find P12, which of course I can't find. Oh, 12 is down there. Right, 14, there's 14, right, well, I don't want to keep going that way, let's see here, put 3 on, so there's not a right or a wrong way, we're just matching up, oops, sides here, there, notice that if I'm doing this correctly, the lengths of the sides will match up. Right? So there's three. Take zero. Let's see here. Zero's right there. Let's move this. Move that to there. All right? We can move two. OK, so there's a good example. So you see how I moved those two and rotated them, right? But see how they overlap? Right? That's not going to be a good cut. It's because of the twist of the buildings that I get that overlap. So really, that's not where I want it to be. Let's instead put it at point 0.9, because that's a straight point. So let's jump it over here, and then we'll rotate, which I can't type rotate today. So we go there. And then I have this last piece, which is 11 and 14. Let's move it to 
to match up with point 10 there. Should work. We'll see. Yeah, there's a there's a gap in between those, so let me rotate and match up with 11 here. All right. So I now have the unrolled shape that matches up with the three-dimensional shape that I, I created. Right? And now, just because mine looks like this, yours is going to look completely different because you're going to have different pieces that, that you're going to try to reassemble. Uh, and depending on the complexity of your buildings, it may or may not work or may or may not be easy. Remember, if yours isn't working or it says it can't do it, try doing a piece of it, try doing a smaller, you know, simplifying it. Uh, do the general shape and loft the sides together instead of having the bulge, something like that. Uh, once we have this, right, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate some borders to get the actual curves, uh, and then we'll do some tabs and, and that sort of thing to, as if we were going to laser cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and use dupe border, and I'm going to duplicate, actually, let me dupe edge. And I'm going to duplicate some edges. Okay, so I went all the way around there, and I can join those together. And then let's go ahead and create a new layer, and we'll call this cut, and I'll change object layer, and we'll change the color to be red, as if I were going to laser cut. Now, you guys are lucky. I'm not making you laser cut this. I used to make everybody make it, and then I decided that was too much work. So you just do the renderings. Uh, but I do want you to be able to do this part of it. So there's cut. Let me duplicate edge again. And we're going to do the engraves. And I'm going to pick each of these seams, because if I were laser cutting this, I'd want the seams to be engraved so that I'd be able to fold these pieces uh, and, and assemble them. OK, so we'll do that. Let me do a new layer. And we'll change this object layer as well. blue. And then I'll go ahead and turn off that so we can see the actual cutouts. Right? So that would then be the pieces that I would cut out. Now, in reality, this side is going to glue to that side. And what I'd like to have is I'd like to have uh, some kind of a tab that would help me glue the two pieces together. So I'll do some offsets. So I'll do an offset, and we'll do a distance of maybe 50 feet. It's a guess. right? And that's too much. Do a distance of maybe 25 feet. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and make a couple offsets here, something like that, so that I can cut them out. Now, I only need them on one side. I don't need them on both sides. So we'll explode this. Oops. And I'll explode this one. Okay, And we'll start here. So if I had tabs that were here and here, right? I don't need them here. And I don't need it here, because this will glue to that side. Okay? And so we'll do a couple little straight lines there. Let's go ahead and leave this one here. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. doesn't really matter if this goes all the way, as long as it doesn't overlap. So I've got those pieces. So that's going to glue to this piece of the triangle, and that's going to glue to this piece of the triangle. I have a little tab, which is going to glue over here, which means I don't need this piece. All right, so it takes a little bit of, of setting it up. Uh, this, we'll go ahead and put the tab on this end. This can go away. You just want to mentally go through and see where these pieces are going to line up. We'll get rid of these. All right. All right.
right, so one side of this is going to need it. So we'll go ahead and do this, and get rid of that. Is we'll glue that, glue that. That's good. This doesn't need it here. And we'll add this line to there. We will add this. I cannot type today. I'm sorry. All right, so that'll glue to that. That'll glue to that. This. Oh, this goes in between these. Actually, I need this one back here. But we'll just approximate it. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Okay. Then let me take. Let's explode. I have to make a few more of these lines blue. So that's going to be blue. That's going to be blue. That's going to be blue. That'll be blue. Object layer. All right, so uh, I'm trying to isolate what needs to be cut versus what needs to be engraved. So you can kind of see how I added those extra little tabs. There's, again, no right or wrong. I'm just offsetting. And so if I were to laser cut this, except for that little piece, which I just let me split this with this, this should be cut. So if I were to go cut this out, and then assemble it, this would end up making that shape. And probably what I should do today is go cut this out of paper and glue it together, and you can see it, how it would work and, and come together. So I have that piece cut out, which is, which is reasonable. This is what we're trying to create, right? And so one of the things that I'm asking you for in your exercise two o or your assignment 203 is to do this, right? It's not the most attractive thing in the world, but I want proof that you understand this unroll concept, okay? So, one of the other things that we can do, this would be just the generic shape to it, not, not much other than the shape. But you remember back to when I did the original unroll. All right, we'll come back to this object. I'm going to go ahead and turn on, remember on these, if I had the floors on, right? I had little curves that went around them. I thought I did. Can I get rid of those? I'm going to leave the ceilings off. Yeah, it looks like I don't have the curves. Um, I want those curves, so let me go ahead and intersect. Um, select floors. And then I'm going to duplicate the border of all those, so I have the curves. I wanted those curves. Let me make sure that they're on their own layer. <coughs> Floor curves. And we'll change the object layer. Perfect. So let's turn off those floors again. And I have the outer surface, and I have all those curves. So now, when I do the unroll surface, I'm going to select my surface itself. And when it says select curves on poly surface to unroll, I can select all of those curves that I just created, right? that represent each floor. And the, the, the advantage here is that when I do the unroll surface, it will unroll every one of these curves with the surface. So if you have a twisting surface, that line that represents what the floor is, that will be perfectly horizontal, will unroll with it. So when you go to laser cut, you can engrave all the little floors. right? So let me go ahead and select those surfaces, or those curves. Let me select them. There they are. And now when I do the unroll, not only will I get the surface, right, but I'll also get all of the little floors and where they correspond. So let's go ahead and let's move these guys over. And let me go ahead and uh, these are grouped by default, so I'm going to ungroup. And then you'll have the ability to select the surface or the curves. Maybe I'll explode it. No. 
Didn't do what it was supposed to do. See, stuff doesn't work out for me too, right? Let's try it one more time. Unroll surface, select curves, objects. All right, well, I'll have to sort out why it's not. It's, it's something must be off on my curves, and they're not actually coplanar with the surfaces. So give me a second to try to get that, because I'd like to show it to you working here. Jeez. So what would you like us to turn in for exercise 220, and what do you want us to turn in for exercise I want you to turn in, and you can notice I'm kind of doubling up, yeah. right? That's on purpose. I want you to turn in basically this, <coughs> right? Word. For 220, okay. and you'll turn this in for your assignment 203 as well. Right, okay. So do the same building, do the unroll <laughs> once, but that way I can help you through it, and that's part of your assignment. Yeah? Uh huh. Okay, so if you, have, if you have a building that, all right, bear with me for a second so we can build up a building that's curvy, okay? Uh, that might be a little too tall of a building. Sorry, you guys just have to bear with me. I have to create a curvy building first, okay? That's fine. We'll do that. Perfect. Trying to trying to have something that was, had some curve to it. Okay, so if I did something like this, and I tried to unroll this surface, unroll surface, uh, of course it's going to do it for me, right? Uh, okay, let me try to. Apparently, I need to mess this up more. So, as long as the curved surface kind of follows the paper rule, it'll, it'll work fine. It'll work fine. I'm trying to make a surface that won't. Mm -hmm. So, bear with me a little longer. See if it'll do it for me now. Okay, 
So I finally got there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so when I tried to unroll this surface, right, which has some pieces that pop out and some pieces that go in, right, there, therein lies some double curvature, right, goes this way and that way at the same time, right. This one goes this way and that way at the same time. When I went to do the unrolled surface, it gave me unrolling doubly curved surfaces will produce inaccurate results, okay, which basically means I can't do it. Um, so when something like this happens, we have several options. One, we can simplify the shape. Right? Two, we could rebuild the shape and try to eliminate that curvature. What I'd recommend is um, using a couple commands. The first one is extract iso curve. Right? So it's, it's duplicate edge and it's extract iso curve. So let me go to extract iso curve. And I'm going to select this surface. And you see how it gives me the ability to create a line on the surface? Right? I want it to go in the opposite direction. So right now it says direction U. I'm going to say direction V. And now it's giving me that vertical line. And I'll create a curve that's there. Right? And I want one on this edge and one on that edge. Right? So I end up with those curves. In an ideal world, I probably create one more in between. And I'm doing these rather arbitrarily. So I end up with something like that. I could do more, right? but that amount will work. And so what I'm going to do with those, let me go ahead and create a couple new layers here. Change object layer, take this and the object layer. Turn that off. OK, so I'm, I'm creating these kind of basic outlines of that. And so instead of having this be smooth, I'm going to take this curve and this curve, and I'll loft it together. And then I'll take this curve and this curve, and I'll loft that together. So I'm approximating the shape of this building rather than having it perfectly precise. I'll take this curve and this curve, and I'll loft. Take this curve and this curve, and I'll loft again. So if I look at the back side of this building, it's approximately the same, but see how it's, it's a little bit more faceted? Right? What it's doing is this is a developable surface because it's a straight line between this and that. This is straight, this is straight, and this is straight. So if I take each of these and I join them, and then I do an unroll surface of that, right? there's my surfaces. And if we look at them, here they are at each of those pieces. So I'll go ahead and click Move so we can move these over closer. And if we were to look down on them, you see how they're, they're longer, skinnier versions. But you could still use those as your three or four that represent this. I could simplify it more by instead of having four surfaces, I could just have two, which would have a seam in the middle, right? a point in the middle. So I'm just simplifying my building. Right? So if I went to take this a little bit further, let's go ahead and delete this. And delete the labels. I'm going to simplify it for the overall piece here. All right, so I have those. We come back, turn on my shape again, and I'm going to go to extract ISO curve. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side here. Do one in the middle, do one on each edge there and there. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now I'll turn off that shape again. So now I have all of the curves around it that I need. So we'll just do groups of loft. So we'll do this and this and loft. Oops. This and this. Loft. And you see, I'm just working my way around this object. All right, so I've made it around. I still need the top, right? So instead of 
right, having the exact curve here, I'm going to duplicate the edge, and I'll do this, 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 this. I'll join and then patch. So okay, gives me that top surface. Bottom surface still is a rectangle, but I'll repeat the process anyway. Duplicate edge, there, there. Join, patch. Okay, now I'm going to take each of these surfaces and we'll join all of them together as a poly surface, including the top. Join. And then I'll do an unroll surface. And how can it give me that? These have to be unrollable. All right, I'm going to have to do them more individually here. One of the tops or bottoms must have have some curvature to it. So let me do this. as one. Unroll surface. There we go. There's my pieces. Right? It's going to take some organization because the pieces are obviously different and more complex. Right? But I can also pay attention to how the tops come together. So let me copy. Let's find piece 17. Right there. Rotate. There it is right there. And we can also take the bottom. So you can see how I could start to assemble them based on that shape. Does that make sense? So if your building is doubly curved and too hard to unroll, create a simplified version of it, right? And I recognize that this really doesn't look that much like your original building, but it's close enough for what, for what we're trying to do with it. OK? Does that make sense? Yeah? Mine won't let me do it on the corners. OK, I'll come have a look. And we'll work through it. And any other global questions before turning those? No? All right. So remember, this is meant to double up so you can basically work on your assignment at the same time you're doing it.